Hi everybody. Well, I have great news today. We were talking about this a while ago and we finally have a decision. We're a go on the Edge Landscape Engine SDK for backers. Uh, what this means is a few days after the Kickstarter is over, uh, we're going to start working on making the current landscape editor available to outside backers. Uh, this is not a serious project and it's not, it shouldn't take too long and hopefully within about a month of the Kickstarter project ending, we're going to have the SDK available to backers. Uh, the program is uh, very stable, very mature, uh, and very easy to use and even pleasant. Uh, so this should, uh, in the end, allow us uh, to use third parties to create new landscape for DCS World War II, uh, which is excellent news. Hopefully with the amount of time we have before the initial release, what this means is that third parties will be able to create some additional landscapes that will be available on day one of the initial release. Uh, obviously it's going to take some community effort. Uh, we will be involved as much as we can, but obviously uh, if we could make the landscapes ourselves, we would. Uh, there's going to need to be some organization, there's going to need to be some talent, and there's going to be a lot of dedication, because these projects take months and months of work. Just to explain briefly on what this entails, uh, each landscape project basically consists of two main portions. Uh, one, we make the 3D models of various objects that cover the landscape, such as the bunkers and uh, water towers, uh, buildings, villages, anything else that you basically are likely to encounter over here, uh, craters, uh, and so on. And the second part entails uh, actually designing the landscape. Uh, for this, you need to have good source data, hopefully not today's maps, but something that goes back to the 1940s that shows the uh, uh, cities and the roads and everything else as existed back then. The airfields uh, is another thing that you need to have really good data on. Uh, ideally, you would have the actual uh, airfield layouts, all the runways and taxiways and hangars and all of that stuff. Uh, you need to have good elevation data. Some of today's data could uh, could work as well because elevation has not changed much in the last 70 years in most of Europe. Uh, and then somebody, uh, one, two, or multiple people will need to go th and uh, input the uh, data into the landscape editor. It actually has a pretty easy uh, import process that takes uh, existing data in an existing format and converts it into a game landscape with uh, uh, shorelines, rivers, uh, elevation, roads, uh, some basic locations for uh, uh, other areas. And then they need to be ma manually fine-tuned. So the community will need to work with a competent 2D artist who can create good-looking landscape textures. Our landscape textures are actually pretty large. They're uh, 8192 by 8192 pixels. Uh, so there's a lot of detail that goes into there that needs to be drawn out. And uh, uh, there's a, a little bit of skill there to make sure that the texture looks good from up close. Uh, and, it actually, and it also looks uh, good from afar. Uh, there needs to be a uh, good balance of detail visible from uh, different distances. Uh, then there will probably need to be a large number of 3D modelers. The artistic skill needed to create buildings is not particularly high. To be honest, it's not as high as something that's needed to create a good-looking airplane or a good-looking co cockpit, uh, but some degree of technical skill is required. Uh, people will need to be able not to just not just create a building, but to uh, create various uh, system objects that need to come with an in-game object, such as a uh, level of detail meshes, damage model, collision model, and all the other system things that need to be present in a working game engine. That, in my experience, is at least half of the development process uh, for a nice looking landscape you need to have roughly a hundred buildings creating these uh, building models is actually a bit of a project uh, in my experience it's at least half of the work when creating landscape uh, sometimes more sometimes less uh, but each building takes a couple of weeks of work up to a month if it's uh, detailed so you can extrapolate it to a hundred buildings that need to be completed uh, 
if a community effort is to be uh, successful, there will need to be a large number of 3D modelers who diligently work and create uh, 3D models of buildings on a specific plan uh, where we design it on paper beforehand and we specify that we need to have 10 buildings for a village and here's what each generic model should look like and here we need to have 20 uh, models for the uh, city we need to have 50 buildings for an airfield and 20 more for an uh, army base and so on and we need to design all this on paper and then go and execute and create all those objects one by one and at the same time the landscape creation itself just making sure that uh, uh, the terrain mesh is uh, looking good that all of the uh, trees are where they're supposed to be that it's textured properly and all of the objects and all of the airfields are the way they should be is also a huge project that takes months and months and months for a dedicated employee uh, good thing is uh, edge allows us to uh, <clears throat> split the effort and allows multiple people to work on the same large terrain so you could have one uh, community member making the northeast corner of the map, the other one making the northwest, uh, somebody else making southeast and southwest, and uh, you can eventually combine those efforts to create one large map. So, to summarize, this is wonderful news that I really hope that with the dedicated fans that we have, that in the past were able to put in so much time and effort into creating something good, that we can uh, put together an effort and work together with this SDK that we release to create new landscapes that will be part of the day one release of DCS World War II. And having said that, we only have four days left in this Kickstarter and the clock keeps ticking. Uh, we really, 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 really want to make that uh, Messerschmitt 262 a reality. Uh, so please consider back in this project if you have not yet backed it maybe uh, you can be that push that gets the snowball rolling gets the other people on board and we finally hit that uh, uh -huh. Mr. Schmidt 262 stretch goal so this is the first of many development updates just like this one that we're going to do both on landscape aircraft and other uh, aspects of development uh, most of those uh, updates are going to be backer only uh, some of them are going to be public and we're really looking forward to working with the community on creating new landscape for DCS World War II. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video and we really hope you'll consider backing this project.